Hi, this is Judith Karakshani and Manos Berlakis from the Minneapolis Heart Institute and the Cardiovascular Innovations Foundation, presenting case 152 for the manual of CTO interventions. This is a case illustrating the importance of reviewing the previous angiograms in patients referred for CTO intervention. The patient had significant coronary artery disease and had coronary bypass graft twice, the first time with a limb to LAD, the second time with a vein graft to the LAD, that subsequently became occluded and was recanalized six months prior. The patient came with angina, but also due to concerns that the patency of that vein graft would not be long-lasting. She had normal ejection fraction and had undergone multiple PCIs of both the left main as well as the LAD. These are the images from the PCI performed six months prior. There is extensive standing in the LAD. There is a CTO in the middle LAD, right at the takeoff of a large diagonal branch. The CTO is within previously placed stents, and we see some faint opacification of the distal portion of the vessel. At that point, uh, the patient had an SVG lesion that was successfully stented and had also a patent vein graft to the right coronary artery that did not require any intervention. So the initial plan was uh, to proceed with uh, dual injection through the vein to the LAD and potentially use retrograde crossing through the vein graft to the LAD and then use undergrade wire escalation or ADR selectively as needed. However, once engaging and performing diagnostic angiography, we found that the vein graft to the LAD was occluded. And that actually explained the patient's severe angina. We injected another vein graft that was applying the obtuse marginal that was patent without any lesions. However, there were no collaterals going to the LAD. And we also performed a dual injection, injecting the saphenous vein graft to the posterior descending artery and that demonstrated some filling of the distal LAD through septal collaterals. There was also an epicardial collateral coming from the patent diagonal to the distal LAD. So based on the most recent angiogram, we now have a CTO of the middle LAD right after the takeoff of the large diagonal branch with a blunt stump. The length of the occlusion is long. The distal vessel is small and diffusely diseased and is filling through collaterals from the right coronary artery, septal collaterals, and epicardial collateral from the diagonal. Our plan here was, given the presence of previous stents, to try with wire escalation, if that didn't work, to go retrograde, and leave ADR as a last option, given the multiple previous stents in the LAD. We inserted a safety wire in the diagonal branch and performed undergrade wire escalation using a Corsair, you use multiple guide wires, Pilot 200, Gaia 2nd, 3rd, and Hornet 14. It was very challenging advancing guide wires through these previously placed stents. But eventually, after using a Confianza Pro 12, we were able to penetrate partially into the old stent and then advance our microcatheter and then uh, you use a Gladius Mongo to advance further down towards the LAD. So this was um, an excellent development. We inserted our Corsair to the middle LAD and performed injection through the tip of the Corsair. But that was not very useful. We could not actually determine the course of the vessel based on this injection. As a result, we decided to switch to retrograde crossing. We tried retrograde through the epicardial collateral. This is a SUO O3 guide wire but uh, we were unable to cross and actually developed a significant spasm in the collateral, so we abandoned that option. We went then to the right coronary artery and uh, used a SUO O3 guide wire, and the SUO O3 actually was able to cross um, all the way into the LAD, actually partially within the previously occluded instant segment. So SUO O3 guide wire, has actually become the guide wire of choice for crossing both septal and epicardial collaterals. Unfortunately, however, the Caravel microcatheter would not, could not follow the SUO O3 guide wire. We had reviewed in the meantime previous angiograms. This was from six years prior, showing the course of the LAD when it was still patent. 
and we can appreciate the significant tortuosity of the vessel. So based on this angiogram, did uh, some more undergrade uh, injections through the microcatheter, and then we were able to appreciate that the vessel actually was coursing superior and then down, so it was uh, highly tortuous, as suggested from the previous angiogram. We were then able to advance the microcatheter, and now we are close to the course of the vessel. Of note, the previously placed stents from the vein graft to the LAD were actually extending all the way from the vein graft into the native LAD, and that creates, of course, problems with crossing the native vessel. We had a lot of difficulty advancing wires in the substent space. We used um, a Gaia second, Gaia third, Pilot 200, Gladius Mongo, without success. We did try to knuckle guide wires. Eventually, with uh, a knuckled Gaia third, which is not our first choice for knuckle wire, but nevertheless, it's a fairly supportive wire, uh, we were able to advance uh, the knuckled wire all the way past the previously placed stents. Advancing other equipment was extremely challenging through the previously or around the previously placed stents, but then using a Sapphire Pro, the first time it ruptured, the second time it could be delivered a little further down, and then we were able to advance a Miracle 6 wire and deliver a Stingray balloon for re-entry into the distal true lumen. We then used uh, the double blind stick and swap technique. Uh, we performed sticking through both uh, exit ports and then chains for a Pilot 200. And the Pilot 200, after a few re entry attempts, successfully um, advanced into the distal true lumen as uh, confirmed through injection from the right coronary artery. We see here it's exiting proximal to the proximal marker and then. Uh, it is redirected and eventually it courses um, down the course of the LAD. We switched for a workhorse wire. You did, uh, we did multiple predilatations and then standed pretty much the entire left anterior descending artery with a drug eluting stents. We wanted to protect the diagonal and that is why we rewired and did a kissing balloon inflation. The right coronary graft did not uh, have any issues during the procedure. And then eventually we got a nice final result. There is a study from Lorenzo Gellini on subadventitial uh, stenting around occlusive stents, which is exactly what we did in this particular case. And in this case, although there was some risk of free stenosis, overall the outcomes were favorable. This was the final result. We did have a restoration of Timothy flow into the LAD. There's a long le uh, stented uh, length uh, into the LAD, and that is why we recommended a definite DAPT in this patient. And there are several lessons from this case. The first one is when there is a bifurcation of the proximal cap to insert a safety wire to protect the branch. The second one is that uh, retrograde crossing may not be feasible in some cases. In this patient, epicardial failed. The septal from the PDA was successful, but the microcatheter could not cross. But nevertheless, we were able to advance undergrade and complete the procedure in an undergrade manner. The third lesson is the importance of the old angiogram. What was the turning point leading to success in this case is reviewing the old angiogram in detail and appreciating the excessive tortuosity of the LAD that can be seen in this film as well. After appreciating that, we were able to advance the wires along the course of the vessel. And then, number four, we were able to go around the previous stents, re-enter distally, and then stent the entire segment to recanalize the LED. Thank you.